What's up everybody? Facebook Live Hot Part Sunday from Times Square, the center of New York City. I told you every week I'm gonna be somewhere different in New York City. Last week, in case you didn't miss, in case you missed it, I was in Flushing Meadow Park, Corona, Queens. Today, Times Square. Uh, it's I gotta I gotta tell you, it's it's uh, it's not the same Times Square I'm used to. All right, for those of you who know, I used to be a yellow cab driver. I'm currently an Uber driver. I've cut through here, I've driven through here a million times, and I can tell you it's not the norm. All right, it's kind of empty. I'll do a little a little uh, 360 for you guys. But yeah, man, this is this is the heart of the world. This is the the, the center of New York City, and it's pretty empty. I know there's a few loose people, but I'm telling you, this place is usually packed on a Sunday afternoon. It's almost, it reminds me of Vanilla Sky. Remember the movie with Tom Cruise, Vanilla Sky, when he was running through Times Square? Or uh, I Am Legend with Will Smith. Or uh, somebody told me, yo, it's like Thanos snapped his fingers and half of us are gone, because this is really weird, man. But hey, I'm here, I'm live. Uh, trying to make the best of it i hope you guys had a good week i had a, a pretty good week staying productive with uh, my whole hot part sunday initiative that i'm putting together what's up john i see you i got your shout out hold on uh and uh yo thank you for coming thank you for coming on chuck i hope you got my text thank you hit that share hit that hit watch watch party for me uh so yeah man Times and also uh today's easter Happy Easter to all you religious, you know, religious people. I'm not religiony, you know what I'm saying. I'm spiritual. I'm spiritual, but I'm not religiony. It's not really a big deal. However, Easter Sunday is a, is a personal day for me, uh, kind of a personal celebration, because it was three years ago on Easter Sunday that I took my last drink of alcohol. Yeah, three years ago on Easter Sunday, I quit drinking and checked into a uh, detox at the Brooklyn VA. So yeah, every Easter Sunday, I kind of do a little celebration of my last drink and I've been dry for three years. So pretty happy, pretty cool. Uh, for those of you who have a drinking problem, jug problem, I'm telling you, when you get to the other side, it's not easy. It's not easy. But when you get there, you get clarity do things clear, you see things clearly, and you act clearly. So totally cool and recommended. Uh, and shout out to all my people in recovery right now who are watching this. I know a lot of people since this coronavirus hit, they have been hitting the liquor stores. You know, it's like, fuck that, we can drink every day, and you're partying, you're drinking, you're getting through this and shit, and that's cool, you know, I know you guys gotta do what you gotta do, but think about all your friends and family that are in recovery right now who are ex-drinkers and ex-alcoholics, ex-drug ex users, because it's pretty rough, okay? One of the hardest times for people who are battling an addiction is when there's nothing going on, when they're sitting still, because that's when the mind starts playing tricks on us, all right? So if you know somebody in recovery, uh, please give them a shout, you know, talk to them, tell them it's okay, tell them, just reach out, because this is the type of time when everything shut down and we're not moving, that we start getting itchy, itchy. You know what I'm saying? We get those um, triggers, and a lot of people fall off the wagon. So look out, look out for all your pe for your peeps, your family members who are in recovery, and yo, give them a shout. Cause I know I've had a few little, you know, wiggles, and you know, cause you're sitting there, there's nothing going. Cause when you, I mean, one minute we're working, we're busy, we're family, and the next minute we're not doing nothing, and then our mind starts playing tricks on us, and that's that's how a lot of us fall off the wagon. So shout out to all my people in, in sobriety and recovery. Uncle Pudge loves you. Stay strong. Hit me up if you need to talk to somebody. Inbox me on Facebook. And, and just my, my um, what I recommend to everybody, stay busy. Just stay busy. Create something. Do something. I know it's hard. And for everyone else that's fucking smoking and drinking, hey, have a good time. Do it in moderation. But be careful because that shit will creep up on you. I didn't think I was an alcoholic for a long time, but it creeps up and you, you can become one. You know what I'm saying? So shout out and uh, 
and, we, and it's 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 a long journey. I fell into the bottle pretty bad. I was a bad drinker. I lost, honestly, I can say I lost three or four years of my life because I was drinking almost practically every day. So it was pretty crazy. So, uh, but I'm recovered. Every every Easter Sunday, kind of celebrate my last drink, uh, my last pint, and then the next day I checked into a detox. Shout out to the VA, all the New York City VAs, and all the soldiers, Marines, Navy, all the guys that I was in detox with and rehab with. God damn it, I love you guys. I, I, I just, I love the rehab. With, there's something about going to rehab. With, there's two types of rehab. I mean, this is civilian, regular, you people, no disrespect. But then there's the military rehab. And it's fucking, it's nuts. Because military, military guys and, and military women don't fuck around. We'll be in groups and they will call you out on your bullshit. So it was pretty fucking awesome. Nobody was walking on eggshells. They were just firing like a motherfucker. If they saw bullshit, smell bullshit, they call you out. And I got called out by freaking Coast Guard, Marines, Navy, other Army guys. Yo, yeah, that's right, Mark Rushy. Facts, facts. I think that's why um, a lot of people in my family, especially, don't kind of like me sometimes because of my assertiveness when it comes to communication. Because I give it to you hard, I give it to you fast, and I'm not bullshitting. And they don't like it, but too fucking bad. You know what I'm saying? But that's I just learned that's the best way to communicate. Just don't beat around the bush. Even with my kids. My kids, my kids are very spoiled, very loved by their mother. Uh, to this day, you know, the mother's on top of them. But as far as me, I've always been kind of tough, direct, and straight. Because the world is not easy, and I want to let them know. You know what I'm saying? So I, I can't bullshit my kids because I love them so much. I feel like I'm not doing justice as a parent if I'm bullshitting and sugarcoating shit. I give it to them straight. So shout out to all my uh, my military people. Uh, what's, what's up, Malik? I see you watching. Uh, my, my friend in Tampa, Florida. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you. Uh, I'll talk about you uh, today or maybe later. I'll, I'll say a little something to my friend in Tampa. Thank you. Uh, I got my military people. I got, oh, speaking of rehab, Angel. Angel, ex-Marine. Yo, we did we did the rehab together. Yo, God bless. Hope you're doing good. And I hope you're staying straight. Reach out if you need help. So, yeah, man. So, Easter Sunday, a religious holiday for everybody else. For me, it's a personal day. A personal day. And, um, hey, I'm just rocking and rolling here in Times Square. Uh, it's kind of foggy. They said it's going to be 60 degrees today. The sun's not out yet. It's a little chilly, but uh, we're making it happen. Uh, a lot of people you recognize, you know, this is where the ball drops. New Year's Eve ball drop. This is it. This is this is the ball drop every year. This place, I don't know, three, four, five thousand people. Remember Dick Clark back in the day? There goes the red steps. I wanted to film. I actually wanted to film from the red stairs behind me. I thought that would be a better shot, but they they uh, they closed it off. But yeah, this is what Dick Clark back in the day grew up watching. The ball drop is actually right up there. I don't know if you can see it behind me at the top. The, you see the 2020? <coughs> That's where the ball comes down. And for those of you uh, history buffs, the first ball drop, the first New York City ball drop was actually in 1907. So we're almost coming up on 100 years of ball dropping in Times Square. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, a, a lot of, a little inside in Times Square, if, you know, a lot of you guys have seen it on TV today or have come here recently. And it's beautiful, it's bright, it's clean, it's family friendly. But it wasn't that when I was a kid. This place was Shady USA. For those of you New Yorkers, you guys already know, 60s, 70s, 80s, if you came out of here, this place was fucking dangerous. It was shady. Drugs, alcohol, prostitution. At one point, I think it was 1984, New York City police made approximately 2,300 arrests in this area alone. I think within one block. 2,300 arrests in Times Square alone. We're not talking about the whole island of Manhattan. We're not even talking about the boroughs. 2003, that's how shady and evil this place was. It was crazy. It was uh, bars, peep shows, strip clubs. Uh, every every other theater was triple X. Yes, Chuck. Chuck Chuck remembers. I think Chuck 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 misses the porn. Yes, there was a lot of porn. Oh, yeah. uh, I'm sure Chuck has some stories to share. Maybe on another show I'll put you on. But yes, a lot of pornography. And then 
Eventually the city take o took over, Giuliani was mayor, and in the 90s they started to clean up. Disney were the first one to move in, then MTV, and then it just took off from there. Right now it, it's big, it's bright, it's beautiful, everybody's welcome, and hey, squared away. So yeah, some of us remember, and some of just, I think watch the movie, if you watch the movie Urban Cowboy, or uh, Robert De Niro Taxi, you can see New York City at its grittiest. You can see it, and that's the way it was. I mean, you didn't come here at night. At daytime, maybe, but at nighttime, pretty freaking dangerous. So, yeah, what's up? Oh shit, Eduardo Infante. What up, dog? I got, ooh, from the Bronx. Mia, hi Mia, I see you. Ooh, Mia, Mia, yo, hit up Mia. I know she hosts some, I mean, she's not hosting anything now, but she was hosting some parties in Queens. So we hit up Mia Lara. She's a total sweetheart. She was hosting some parties in Queens. And uh, I know there's no parties right now. I know we're all at home and shit. But hey, we're gonna get to those parties. You guys know I'm already plotting. I'm already plotting for the other side. I got the, the COVID-19 breakout comedy show. Uh, I'm gonna be producing when we all get out of this on the back end. So yeah, man. Oh shit, oh shit, shout out to Robin Shaw, it's not a comedian Robin Shaw from Long Island. Oh shit, thank you. Oh, oh shit, I can hit waves. I'm gonna start waving at people. Yo, this is my first time, oh actually, second time, I'm, I'm doing something on uh, Facebook Live, so I'm not used to the technology and all the gadgets. So forgive me if I'm a little slow, all right? I'm at that age. Blame it on my parents, because they didn't get me a computer as a kid. All right, they were all cheap and shit, so I fell behind all the technology. But uh, I'm hanging in there, I'm learning, that's what I'm doing this, these couple of months that we're on lockdown. I'm addressing my Achilles heel as far as marketing, promotion, creation, because I got to get my, my comedy career going. It's funny because a lot of you people watching, especially uh, the out-of-towners in Florida, Texas, all my military buddies, you keep asking me, yo, when you coming? When you coming to my city? When you come into my state, when you coming? And I'm like, yo, I'm all, I always wanna go, but I gotta get booked. And in order to get booked, I gotta have some kind of following. That's how it works nowadays. So if you're on this and you're somewhere in the US, yo, hit share, hit the watch party. Hit the watch party last night, right now. Hit it right now, watch party right now. So everyone across America can see me, I can catch a following, and then I can come to your city. I like 14 years in comedy, yo, I got the stage pretty locked down, all right? I can hold it down. Okay, I can make you laugh. That's the good news. But the bad news is that my technology, social media, the marketing, the creation of content is way behind. So that's my that's my goal for this little coronavirus lockdown. Every day I'm on YouTube, I'm on Google, I'm playing with these freaking apps. I'm gonna do Instagram Live uh, real soon. I'm gonna get on Zoom. I'm gonna get on a lot of stuff. What's up, Lisa? Lisa Harmon, Queens, New York comedian. I, and uh, yes, and uh, of course, Stephanie, you got your shout out coming. Just hold on. Yeah, thank you everybody who sent me their shout outs. Those are coming. Those are coming. I got everybody's shout out. Uh, I hope everybody's doing well. It's being safe. I know it's tough. Uh, I don't like watching the news. I only watch it once. I only watch the news once a day, and that's when the governor is on. So he's the only one I actually like. Which uh, leads me to my question of the day. Hot punch question of the day. If you saw it, I posted it up last night on my Facebook wall. And the hot punch question of the day is, New Yorkers, are you team de Blasio or team Cuomo? Vote now. Let me see Let me see how you guys are voting right now. Team de Blasio, team Cuomo. For those of you outside of New York City, de Blasio is our mayor. Cuomo is our governor. And ever since this corona thing broke out, they haven't been the best of friends. They've been going back and forth. It's pretty funny, it's hilarious. A, a case in point, yesterday the mayor goes on TV to announce that New York City schools are gonna be closed and remain closed till September, all right? And a couple hours later, the governor comes on TV and says, hold up. Hold up, you ain't in charge, Mayor. That's my call. Step the fuck back. Uh, yo, it's hilarious. The governor is putting the mayor in check. The mayor is putting the governor in check. It's it's good TV. So that's that's my entertainment. So yo, yo, chime in right now. Team de Blasio or Team Cuomo? Roland, I see you. 
I got some more shout outs for you. You know this. Uh, personally, I'm Team Cuomo. Uh, um, hey, I like the guy. I like the guy for a lot of reasons. I don't, I don't watch politics much, you know, because he's the governor of our state. Uh, I don't particularly see him. Like the mayor is the guy we see the most, the most on TV because we're in New York City and he's the mayor. The governor, not so much, but since this corona shit hit, I've been watching him a lot. And yo, I love him. I like him a lot. Uh, very simple. He speaks intelligently about his business. You know what I'm saying? He, he knows what he's talking about. And he's not addressing this just as a New York problem. He's, he's addressing it as a world problem. He's thinking outside the box. He's, he's thinking uh, it as a tri-state, as a country problem. So he's looking at the big picture. I like where he's thinking. I like where his mind's at. He's very tactical. You know what I'm saying? He, you know, he's very tactical. He's looking at it you know, from a global perspective. So yeah, totally uh, Cuomo. And a little FYI on why I also like him. Um, me and the governor, excuse me, the governor and I went to the same elementary school. Shout out to St. Gerard Magella in Hollis, Queens. I went there for four years in elementary school. And it turns out we had, the, me and the governor had the same teachers. I remember this because when I was in the fourth grade, my teacher, Miss Perini, uh, she was a tough lady. She used to brag, because back in the early 80s, our governor's father, Mario Cuomo, was the governor of New York. So she used to brag to us that um, she used to teach the governor's sons, his children. So I was like, oh, wow, cool. But look at this, you know, 30, 40 years later, the son that she taught is governor now. And I, we were both in the same school. So, yo, there you go. Me and the governor went to the same elementary school. Yo, what that'll tell you, I see we're both smart, we're both good looking, we're both funny, but he's the only one with the nipple rings. I can't go that I can't go that route. So yeah, he uh, the governor has nipple rings. That was pretty funny. Uh, you, if you Google it, you'll see it. You can see the big little dumbbells. That, that's a we got a sexy governor. That's pretty badass. I couldn't get the nipple ring. But yo, shout out to the governor. Yo, shout out to Jason Andors and Gideon Klein. Yo, I got a lot of comics watching, so that's cool. Thank you. Uh, and I know the comedian, shout out to my comedian. I know we're hurting. We're hurting. I don't know if the people understand. We are hurting because we're not getting stage time. Yo, comedy is not easy. It takes a lot of work. And part of that work is getting on stage every night. Every night. We have to get on stage every night. It's, it, it's what we have to do to stay warm. Look, if you look at it from a baseball perspective, you got these baseball players making 20, 30 million dollars a year to hit a ball. But what do they do before every game? Batting practice, warm-ups before every game. And that's what comedians have to do, is we gotta be on stage to stay warm. And we've been cold for about two weeks, at least most comedians. The funny thing is, uh, most comedians stop working about the weekend of March 20th. They haven't been performing. I think I'm the coldest out of all comedians because I haven't been working since February. I stopped. My last time I was on the stage was I think I did uh, a show in Bell Boulevard with uh, my other f uh, fellow comedian, Marcy, who produces a show out there. Uh, and February was the last time. And the reason I haven't performed since February, a lot of people don't know this, I'll share it with you now. I got sick, I caught an illness. I caught Bell's palsy. That, it, it's some creepy shit. For those of you who know Bell, what Bell's palsy, uh, if you don't know what Bell's palsy is, it's the partial paralyzation of your face. Half your face stops working. That's some creepy, scary shit. It was, it's pretty weird. I'll, I'll tell you the symptoms so you guys know, because I wouldn't wish it on anybody. But on a Sunday, I caught this weird pain that I never had before in back of my ear. It was the weirdest place to have a pain, like a headache, but in back of my ear. And then later that week, about Wednesday, Thursday, I started losing taste in my food. Almost like when you burn your tongue and then the food don't taste right. Yeah, so that got weird, but I didn't. I just, you know, shrugged it off. And Friday morning, I'm Ubering in Long Island, and then I'm, my left eye ain't blinking, half my mouth isn't moving, and it, it's just, it, it, it's just whack. It's out of half my face. Luckily, I didn't get the droops because sometimes one of the side effects of Bell's palsy is like your face collapse, and it looks like it's drooping. I didn't get that, but it went numb. 
So it was pretty scary. And a special shout out uh, to um, my ex-girlfriend in Tampa, Paula. I know you're watching. Thank you so much. Um, I knew that she had Bell's palsy. She caught it like 10 years ago. So she was the first one I caught. I called and she told me to immediately go to the emergency room. I wanted to wait a couple of days, but she told me, nah, don't mess around. Go to the emergency room. Cause see the, the symptoms of Bell's palsy are also the same sim symptoms to a stroke. <clears throat> so I could have been having a stroke, but you know, unless I see a doctor, I won't know. So be careful when you feel numbness in your face, on your left side, or any part of the body, it could be Bell's palsy, it could be a stroke. So yeah, she, she told me, go to the emergency room immediately. I went to the VA, and in the, well, long story short, uh, I'm cool. As you can see, my face works 100%. I can move my mouth. Yo, I'm telling you, it was scary and it sucked. As a stand-up comedian, I can't go on stage talking like a half-act like this, and then one eye is blinking, and one eye, no, it was it was scary. I didn't. People would tell me I should go on stage with it. Yeah, thank you, Jackie. God bless you too. Thank you. Uh, it was scary, especially as a performer. All right, and and then sleeping, and one eye is not closing, like not having control of one of your eyes. It was scary, absolutely scary. But after three weeks, uh, it goes away. I got some acupuncture, a lot of rest. Uh, a lot of people. Where it comes from, I don't even want to get into it. They, there's no absolute place they said it could be some i don't know related some kind of venereal disease somebody also said chicken pox related then they said men in their 40s get it uh also stress everyone but when they so people think stress because i'm i'm under a lot of stress a lot uh, my family does that to me but regardless uh but it was a slow process but after three four weeks it came back and funny enough it came back just when it came, when it got when it went away and I was ready to rock and roll and I was gonna go hit the stage, that's when the virus hit and everything got locked down. So I know a lot of comedians are cold, but I'm colder. I haven't been on stage since freaking February, so I don't want to hear it. I'm colder, but hey, we're all gonna get out of it. We're gonna have some we're gonna have some coronavirus uh, stand-up comedy shows on the back end. Anthony, I want to pet your mustache. Oh, uh, uh, thank you, Anthony. No homo. Uh, okay, <laughs> uh, I trim it, I save it, I do a little something some every week, but uh, yeah, I'm just playing with, I've always been jealous, I, I, I shave and cut my mustache and beard in a lot of different ways, because I, I gotta be honest, and I've never shared this with anyone, I've always been jealous of women and their hair, because first, first of all, I'm a heterosexual, love women, always had, you guys are awesome, Uncle Pudge loves you all, but I've always been jealous that you guys can change your look with your hair so many ways and every day you can look different and that just makes you more beautiful and it's and that's like cool like you know you can wear it to the back you can wear it to the left you can wear it to the right you can wear it in a ponytail you can put the cap with the ponytail you can put it up you can curl it you can straighten it you can cut it i mean every day you can have a different look and i'm like that's pretty awesome i wish men could do that but we kind of can't uh except for our mustaches so i kind of that's why i always switch it up you know, last week I had the full full Fu Manchu. Today I have the three prong attack. And next week I'm gonna switch it up again. I just, I try to look different. That's all. Uh, anyway, so yes, I see everybody. Oh shit, somebody sent me, oh damn. Yo Blondie, Kevin sent me a, a, friend, a request. Tell him I hit him up later because that shit popped and then left. I wasn't able to hit it, but I got you. I got you. Yes, Judy, that's some scary shit, thank you. Uh, yes, uh, I went to the I went to doctors. I had CAT scans. I had MRIs, uh, but I'm good. As you can see, I'm talking. If I wasn't able to talk, I wouldn't be doing this shit. All right. So thank God I got through it. Shout out to Paula and Tampa for helping me out. Oh, shout out to my man Sample. Uh, his wife is a yo. When when you get sick, well, at least when I get sick, I call everybody I know in the medical field. I, I called my my boy Sample, who uh, I went to basic training with. His wife is a nurse. I call Chris Stefano. Shout out to Chris Stefano. You guys know him from MTV and his podcast, Laughing Hyenas, with Giannis Papas. Chris is a good friend of mine, and for those of you who know him well, you know he's a physical therapist, so he went to doctor school. So I hit him up, and anybody, because I get scared. That shit was scary. So anybody, if you were a janitor in a hospital, I hit, I hit him up. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm trying to just get information on this shit. I was 
really scared. Shout out, shout out to everybody I hit up and thank you for all the information and shit. And uh, yo, I'm better now. And uh, things are looking good. Just looking to get out of this. Uh, I got a lot of shout outs. I got a lot of shout outs. So let's do the shout outs. Thank you for everybody for watching. First shout out, yo, shout out to John Schaefer. John Schaefer from Wisconsin. A lot of people are like, yo, why is somebody from Wisconsin watching you? Well, maybe I'm awesome. Maybe I'm awesome. Or maybe I served with John, Bravo Company, second of the seventh, first cavalry division back in the 90s, all right? We were rocking and rolling, first Bravo Company Bulldogs, first cavalry division. So God bless, 11 Bravo, 11 Mike, thank you for watching, John. Please share, please hit watch list, tell all our brothers to watch. John hit me up and said he's gonna send me a Milwaukee Brewers baseball cap that he wants me to wear. I'll do it. You send me the cap, I'll wear I'm not a Brewers fan. I'm a meth fan. Everybody knows I'm a meth fan. But I'll wear the Brewers hat. So, but I got but I got a soft spot for the Packers. I love the Packers. I love the history. I love Lombardi. I actually bought Lombardi's. Uh, his son wrote a book, What It Takes to Be Number One. Uh, totally recommend it. And my dream is to go to Lambeau Field. My son and I, uh, we're diehard Giant fans. But when the Giants get knocked out, yo. Packers. That's who we root for, the Packers. So yeah, shout out to Wisconsin and all your cheese and sausages and shit. Definitely want to head up there. So thank you, John. Uh, I'll be waiting for the hat. I'll wear it. You know I got you, dog. You know I got you. Ooh, Cynthia. Hey, Cynthia. Cy oh, shit. I got Cynthia from Newtown High School. We were together. Oh my God, she played the flute. I played the trumpet. We were in the band and we had a great time. And shout out to her son because her son's serving in the military too. He's in the army. He's a bang bang bunny artillery. Shout out. Uh, so shout out to your son. I hope he's doing well. Shout out to my boy Cheech, Frankie Cheech from the neighborhood. Cheech is doing big things, man. Back in the day, Cheech was a neighborhood DJ. <clears throat> he turned his garage into like a DJ studio. Cheech used to make us mixtapes. We used to make, he used to make us mixtapes back in the day, and now he's in the music industry doing big things. So hit me up, Cheech, we'll talk. I'd love to know what you're doing, what you're up to. Shout out to Steve Barry, another Bulldog, Bravo Company, second of the seventh. What's up, Norma? What's up, Norma? I'm Norma, I remember you from Laugh Lounge. I remember you, what's up, how you doing? I hope you're doing well. Daisy, yes, Daisy, you're from Queens. I got mixed, you moved, but yes, Queens at heart. Queens at heart. Daisy used to come see me at Play Lounge. Yes, from TD Bank. Shout out to all my TD Bank people. She used to bring the squad from TD Bank on Queens Boulevard to Play Lounge on Queens Boulevard to see my shows back in the day. So shout out to everybody. Uh, oh, my next shout out, yo, Carmen Juanita Morales. Carmen Juanita Morales from Orange County, New York. Shout, very special. Hugs and kisses. Yo, she's a fan. She's been watching me. She, she um, we met at Tequila Joe's pub and restaurant on Woodhaven Boulevard. That's where she saw me. High sign, high sign. You remember this? I was cracking jokes, doing little rascal shit. And shout out to her. Her birthday was April 15th. April 15th. So mad happy birthday to you, Carm. You've always been there. Yo, you got me. Yo, she got me Met tickets. Thank you. That was fucking. Oh, we had a great time. She got. Yo, guys, if you get me Met tickets, I'm gonna love you forever. All right. She got me Met tickets. She brought her family and friends. We had a we had a great time. And she's originally from Queens. She got a house in Orange County. So, Carm, thank you so much. And yo, shout out to you. Much love. And yes, Daisy Queens for life. Queens for life. <laughs> Lori. Oh shit, Lori Schenectady. Oh, Lori. Oh my God. I remember we went. Uh, we did a show in Funny Farm, up in Schenectady. That was like, yo, it was funny. That was like a five-hour drive from Queens. And, and yo, it was scary because we went from the city to the country to the woods. And we it was like some Jason Michael Myers shit woods in the middle of nowhere. There's this restaurant and we didn't know what the hell we were walking into. It was called Funny Farm. It was a pub with the, the club in the back of the restaurant. But once we got in there, holy shit, you guys were rocking and rolling. It was one of the best sets. This was several years ago, but that had to be the high mark of my comedy career back then. Because you guys, holy shit, you guys, it was just an amazing time. So shout out to Schenectady. All right. Uh, shout out to Judy Vargas. Judy Vargas from the Bronx. Shout out. She has a couple of birthday shout outs to her son and daughter. Now, Judy, your son is March 15th. And Ricky 
and your daughter was March 20th. Uh, you didn't give me your daughter's name, so I don't know. She might be pissed if she's watching. Your son's Ricky. You didn't give me your daughter's name, so I don't know. Mom, check that. But they celebrated their birthdays in March. Indoors, totally get it. Much love. This is why I'm doing Hot Punch Sunday. Yo, a little shout out, a little love, and God bless. Hope you're doing well. Jimmy and Judy go way back, way, way back to Marshall. We used to work at Marshall's department store. She was a customer, a coordinator, customer service, and I was loss prevention. Back in the day, before I did comedy, I was tackling shoplifters and Marshall's and TJ Maxx. Those are some good times. If you were stealing, I caught you ass. I caught you, I caught you. And there was a lot of fights, a lot of brawls. I, I had a blast, I had a blast. And, and Judy, I don't know if you caught the beginning, but I've been talking to a mutual friend of ours. She was customer service too. I don't you, you remember? All right, she's in Tampa now. So, yo, hit her up, she's doing well. Uh, like I said, Paula helped me out with the Bell's Palsy. And it's nice to have you both on a little Mount Marshall. Shout out to everybody. And shout, tell your kids I said what's up and happy birthday. Uh, and, and hey, listen, if anybody has shout outs, Facebook inbox me. I do them all. I'll do any and all shout outs, all right? My next shout out is not a birthday. It's an anniversary shout out. An anniversary shout out from Stephanie Ruiz from Queens, AKA La Loca. AKA uh, the Bonchiche Queen of Queens, AKA, uh, AKA my sister-in-law. Shout out to her and her boyfriend, Kevin. Uh, they just celebrated their eight year anniversary of dating. They've been dating for eight years. They've been going out for eight years. Eight years. Ocho, Ocho, eight years dating. I'm not. I'm not saying none, I'm just saying eight years. You guys, you know what, eight years dating. You know what I'm saying? Can you can you see what I'm saying? Eight years, I mean, you guys are kind of experts at the dating, maybe it's time. I mean, to go to the next level, cause you got the third degree black belt of dating. I think maybe you wanna go Kung Fu. You know what I'm saying? You know, like the, you know, Kung Fu, maybe snake style, dragon style engagement ring style eight years i'm just saying i'm not saying nothing but i'm saying eight years yes charlie luca get married already that's what i'm saying that's my sister-in-law i'm saying hey listen i i knew i was gonna marry your sister after two years of dating two years i knew i i, I mean partially because she was pregnant but i knew i kind of knew i knew <laughs> I knew, so I'm just saying, damn it, damn it, do something. Kevin, get down on the knee, god damn it. You're working for UPS now. <laughs> anyway, shout out to Blondie, my sister-in-law, Kevin, eight years, keep it going, stay strong, and I hope you have eight more. I'm just saying, eight years, god damn it. Oh, man. Also, a very special shout out uh, it's not a birthday, it's not an anniversary, it's to a special friend, uh, Therese, Therese Lawler. Therese Lawler, uh, one of my favorite bartenders from post-time Patty G's back in the day when I was doing a lot of, producing a lot of comedy shows. Uh, uh, I was doing one in post-time Patty G's. And if you're a comedian, if you're, <coughs> excuse me, if you're a comedian, you remember Therese because she used to get us fucked up. She's a big fan of stand-up comedy. She used to love the comics. And she always got you drinks, but if you were really funny, she got you a lot of drinks. So I hit her up the other day, I checked in. She's doing well. I know she's going through some stuff personally. So I wanted to give her a big shout out. Tell her Uncle Pudge loves you. Thank you for all those shows. I also shared with her my plan for doing some uh, com uh, coronavirus breakout comedy shows when this is over, because this is gonna end. And we want to come out with a bang and help out all those bars and restaurants and lounges. I want to give back. I told her I will be producing shows for free. I will be producing shows for free, no charge. Because I want to give back and you guys, everyone's going to need a boost. It's not going to be easy coming out of this. But I want to give back and give these businesses who looked out for me, I want to give back a boost. So she's totally on board. We have So we have another show. Uh, Therese Lola is going to find a location. It might be post time, Patty G's. It might be post. She's not sure because, again, some of these businesses, we don't know 
if they're gonna be around. Some businesses might close after this. Hopefully, Post Time will still be there. There's a, you know, there's a lot of love there, a lot of alcohol, a lot of stories. Uh, pretty funny, pretty crazy. So yes, Therese Lawler, totally on board. She's gonna find another location. And so far we had two, that's two. And then there's Rolling Greens. Shout out to Rolling Greens. For those of you, I don't know if you saw the announcement, Rolling Greens, Bell Rose Queens, officially is gonna get a coronavirus breakout comedy show. Uh, I was with Roland earlier this week. We bumped into each other, six feet, of course, six feet. He threw me a t-shirt, thank you so much. And, sh and shout out to Roland Green's Pub, man. Roland, Greeny, uh, doing their thing. Um, they're, they're putting in, man. They're really putting, they're giving back. They've, they've been cooking almost every day and sending out food to various hospitals uh, in New York, and, and especially in the Queens, Long Island area. I know they get they send some food to LIJ, the women's hospital, where, all they, where a lot of them give birth and the babies are born. So they're doing a, they're a lot of do, doing a lot of good things. So shout out to Rolling Greens. Absolutely, definitely. I'm going to hook you guys up. And much love to you guys. Keep up the good work. And guys, if you live in the Burl Rose area, they are, they're closed, but they're delivering food. They are delivering food, and they got this great promotion. $50 or more, you get a free roll of toilet paper. $75 or more de delivery, you get two rolls of toilet paper. If you order $100 or more, you get three rolls of toilet paper. And if you mention my name, Punch Fernandez, you get an extra roll of toilet paper. So I don't know any other restaurant or bar doing that. That's pretty freaking funny and clever. And hey, we can all use a little toilet paper because we don't know how long this is going to last. So shout out to Rolling Greens. Much love. Thank you so much. We're gonna have a blast when we come out of this. Oh, another. We got. An, I got another. Oh, shout out to Ramon. Ramon, my good friend. Yo, we. I know him since junior high school and Newtown. We're also in the band. Yo, I got military. I got people I was in a band with from high school. I got people I work with. This is a lot of fun. So yeah, shout out to everybody. Thank you for coming out. Uh, like I said, this is my second episode. This is. Everyone keeps asking me, where's my mask? It's in my pocket, all right? I'm safe. I'm more than six feet away from everybody. There's no one out here, but thank you for asking. My producer's got his mask on, but I just, I don't know. I'm not, I put my mask on everywhere else, but not when I'm recording. So but thank you so much. Uh, all is good. Uh, so thank you for watching. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for everyone for hitting um, the watch party. Please keep hitting watch up. Brian, Brian Dempsey. Brian Dempsey. Yo, Brian Dempsey's a bar. Yo, hit me up, man. In case you haven't heard, I'm launching some parties, uh, comedy, corona, <laughs> coronavirus breakout comedy shows. Uh, I'm offering my services for free, maybe bring some comedians. So hit me up if you want one. When this thing is over, we want to hit the ground running with shows. So we're going to have a breakout. We want to help you guys out. So hit me up, Brian Dempsey's. Like I said, this is my second episode. <clears throat> thank you for watching. Thank you for sharing, and continue to watch and share. Uh, I got big plans. I'm not. I'm not being lazy. I'm not sitting home. I'm actually working every day, trying to get my hands and, and anything on anything that can teach me this, this, this technology, social media stuff. Because I need to get to the next level in comedy. So I want to get to the next level. I want you guys to come with me, okay? And and let's see what happens. Because I. I I got to do what I got to do, and, and I want to have fun doing it. I want to take you guys with me. So, yeah, every week, a uh, different episode from a different location. Next week will be a different location. Last week was Flesh and Metal Park. This week is Times Square. Next week, yo, who knows? You got to stay tuned. Shout out to Mike Reddy. Mike Reddy. Oh, my God. Mike and I. Mike um, was one of the head officials of the uh, Forest Hills Girls Softball League where my daughter played and he roped me into being a coach. I wasn't trying to be a coach. I'm one of those dads that just like to sit back and watch. But he roped me in and I kind of fell in love with, the, in love with the job. I went from a third base coach to a first base coach to being a manager with uh, with Brandy. So that was a, those are five great years being a coach uh, for my daughter's softball team. So thank you, thank you, Mike. Thank you for watching. Uh, totally love. It. We'll, to we'll have some. I actually have some softball jokes because uh, there's nothing funnier than trying to teach girls softball. Uh, hilarious. All right. Ramon, my mo my boy Ramon. Shout out to the Elmhurst Hospital frontliners. Yo, I've driven by uh, Elmhurst Hospital. It's real, guys. It's very real. That is the center, like, like the center of New York City. The lines are ridiculous. 
and they actually opened up another hospital in the Flushing Middle Park where the U.S. Open plays because it's, you know, the numbers are flattening out, but people are still dying and there's still people getting sick. So shout out to all the hospital employees, everybody working in the hospital, from the security guard to the janitor, to the doctors, to the nurses, to the volunteers. Shout out to all the ambulance workers, not only the EMT, New York City EMT, but I don't know if you guys know this, but we have uh, ambulance EMT medics from all over the country stationed in Flushing Meadow Park on standby. They're picking up all the 911 calls that our EMTs can't get through. So they're on standby in Flushing Meadow Park. You can see them, they're right next to the Queens Museum. And yo, I, I drove through there and I looked at the license plates, Massachusetts, Wisconsin, North Carolina, Florida, Illinois. These guys are all like drove up here to help us get through this. Cause, and it's pretty freaking amazing. I spoke to one of them. They're in good spirits. They're ready, willing, and able to help. And they're backing us up. So shout out to everybody. Thank you for all your support to all the EMTs, all the doctors, and Elmhurst, and all the hospitals. So much love. Uncle Pudge loves you. Keep doing your thing. So, and again, thank you guys. Thank you so much for, for uh, hanging in there. I'm going to wrap this up. I'm gonna wrap this up so again big things coming uh, I'm gonna do this every Sunday hot punch Sunday Facebook live one o'clock every Sunday every Sunday from a different location uh, stay tuned for next week send me your shout outs anniversary shout outs birthday shout outs uh, whatever just send it I'll give a shout out uh, also if any bars or restaurants hit me up let's yo let's start plotting let's start plotting for when this shit is over it's gonna end we're gonna get through this together but we're gonna need each other on the other side all right it's not gonna be overnight so I want to give a little something back to those bars lunch uh, restaurants and lounges you know to kind of boost up you know your your crowd hopefully get a little business because I know we're all hurting so hit me up if you guys want to show all right, so a lot, I was thinking about a lot of things as far as Hot Punch Sunday, like what is my intent? What, why is it that I wanna do? Like what is the reasoning? And I came down to this. I wanna, I wanna share. I wanna have a good time, I wanna have fun. So basically the, like the official model, my official model for Hot Punch Sunday would be live, love, laugh, and learn. Live, love, laugh and learn because I've, I've lived quite a few years and I've laughed and I've loved but man did I do some learning especially this last decade this last couple of years I got a lot of stories to share a lot of personal stories um, some people are gonna be put on blast yes you know who you are some people are gonna be put on blast big time blast but uh, but it's all about sharing because I want people to learn. I want to I want to let people know the experiences I'm going through because they're not easy. And I want to let people know that hey, if you're hurting, you're in pain. Hey, you're not the only one. Shit happens to everybody, and we can learn from this. And if we can learn, we can love on the other side, and we can have a few laughs because it's pretty goddamn funny what's been happening to me over the past couple of years. The Bell's palsy. That is the tip of the iceberg. Let me tell you about 2019. Don't let me get don't get me started in 2019 but i will do that another time a lot of stories to share thank you so much yes ramon i'm trying to leave a legacy i'm trying to leave a legacy i got my kids and i got some beautiful nieces and nephews that i want to teach and let them know what's up uncle pudge is gonna let them know a lot of people in my family don't like me because i'm brutally honest and they're scared and you should be Cause I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna bring the heat, and I'm tell everybody what's up. I'm gonna share with everybody. So stay tuned, stay tuned. Hop us on your Facebook Live, also Instagram Live. I'm gonna be doing some interviews. I wanna do some interviews and hopefully Zoom. All right, everybody. So love, hugs, kisses to everybody. All right. Remember, live, love, laugh, and learn. All right. My name is Pudge Fernandez. I'm gonna sign out from Times Square, New York City. All right, thank you for watching. Thank you for sharing on the watch party. We're gonna do this every Sunday. Stay in touch, inbox me. Uh, <laughs> Jessica Sample, stop licking your fingers. I, I, I'm something, Je see this is the nurse. Jessica's the nurse, my, my, one, of my, one of my battle buddies from basic training. Uh, his wife's a nurse and she's, she's already calling me out. Stop licking your fingers. I'm sorry, I have a cheat sheet. I have a cheat sheet and my producer is is sucking right now. So I'm licking my finger because I got to turn the page. 
I might have to fire my producer. Uh, you met him. You met him, Junior. Yes, that's my producer. So shout out to thank you, thank you. I know you're a nurse and you're only looking out, but too funny. Uh, everybody stay safe, stay clean. We're gonna get through this together, all right? Much love, thank you so much. From Times Square, my name is Pudge Fernandez and I'll see you guys next week.